We spent over a hundred hours testing PvP on the War Within beta. Between all of the server crashes, lag, and random bugs, we finally learned one thing. Enhancement Shaman still kinda sucks. But seriously, with the game officially about to drop, we have learned a lot over the past few months while working behind the scenes with the best players in the world. We then used over two months worth of collaboration and research to design brand new courses at skillcap.com. Over the next few weeks, we will be rolling out daily updates to our website with brand new damage and healing courses for every spec, and some incredible new premium profiles for our revolutionary add-on. The start of the expansion is the perfect time to be a Skillcap member, as you will have everything you need to immediately start climbing fast, all while being backed by our rating gain guarantee. So, what are you waiting for? Visit the brand new skill cap by using the links in the video description. If you're wondering if we're going to have anything good to say about the War Within, the answer is yes. But we have to warn you that the good also comes with the bad, and perhaps even the ugly truth of WoW's future. First up, what might possibly be the best change going to the War Within is the gearing system. If you didn't hear by now, the Great Vault is gone for PvP. While the Vault might have been an exciting reason to log in on server resets, it was ultimately a slot machine that made gearing decisions a bit more complicated. But before you panic, there will be a quest that automatically grants you a conquest weapon on week 3 of the season. And by the looks of it, the crafting system in Dragonflight will be similar, but even better, with the ability to scale pieces to maximum item level with a PvP-specific crafting reagent, purchasable with Honor or Conquest. And right now, it seems like sparks aren't even required for crafting PvP gear. On paper, this should mean faster gearing as the season progresses, since you aren't gated by a bi-weekly quest. There are also a handful of new and returning embellishments, which we will all be covering in a future gearing video. And be sure to bookmark our articles page for updates to BIS lists once the expansion launches. Tier sets will also be making their return. And based on an interview we did a few months ago, it seemed like there was no intention of changing how they work in PvP in the War Within. And with the Great Vault gone, you will now be able to purchase gem sockets with Honor, which can now be used to socket new prismatic gems with recycled embellishment effects like Precognition, and even a Conflict and Strife effect from BFA. And speaking of honor, it will now be transferable between every character on your account using the new Warband system, which will be nice in getting your alts geared in the early season. Gearing isn't the only thing to see improvements in the War Within, as gameplay is also leveling up. One of the core features of the new expansion are hero talents, which help merge two specs into one. For instance, a disciplined priest can now also spec into the Void Weaver tree, modifying many existing abilities to fit the design and aesthetic of a disc shadow hybrid. Some of these new hero talent trees even give specs entirely new abilities built from the ground up. Now, you might be worried that hero talents will break the game, but if we had to guess, many will likely have PvP modifiers to dramatically reduce their effect in Arena. But the main reason we think hero talents can at least be considered good for the game is because they're pretty darn cool, both artistically and from a gameplay perspective. They also help the game feel a bit more modern and polished. As much as some players like to relive the past and play Classic WoW or any other old expansion, you have to remember that PvP needs a steady stream of new players in order to survive, and right now the gaming market is oversaturated with high APM games and flashy combat systems, which is something that can't really be captured by older versions of World of Warcraft. With that said, the elephant in the room is how now there is another layer of game knowledge to memorize as a PvPer. Which is why every expansion we update our Knowing Your Enemy course at Skillcap.com. There are also a handful of new system updates, including a new Battleground and new Rated BG Blitz mode, which we confirmed will not replace RBGs. There is also a new lever system inside of every arena starting room, which teams can pull to initiate an instant countdown to the match start. Definitely a unique idea Blizzard came up with themselves. Anyway, with all these improvements to systems, can we expect gameplay to be better too? Well, a few months ago, we made a video explaining what has gone wrong with PvP in the past few years. The three things we pointed to were mobility creep, micro CC, and AoE damage. And thankfully, the War Within seems to be addressing at least two of these issues. A little bit? On the mobility side, you might have heard that Death Knights will now be able to mount in combat, similar to a Paladin's Divine Steed. But what you might not have heard is that some melee specs are losing the talents that extended the range on their attacks, like Acrobatic Strikes for Rogues, Lunge for Survival Hunters, and Astral Influence for Feral Druids, which now only affects spells. Of course, other melee like Ret Paladins will still have extended range on many attacks, but for the most part, melee will be melee once again in the War Within, and won't be able to extend their arms three extra yards to hit you from across the map. But as we quickly discovered, rogues can get four charges of Shadow Step, so yeah, I guess 
yes, there is some mobility creep too. Anyway, there are also baby steps of improvement on the micro CC side. For example, Strangulate will now completely override Asphyxiate when selected as a PvP talent. Mages will now even have slightly less CC as Ring of Frost shares a talent slot with Ice Nova. And in other cases, some minor forms of micro CC have been completely removed from the game. So with a few baby steps, it seems like there are some very minor improvements to micro CC, but mobility creep might continue being an issue for a few specs. AoE damage is still looking grim across the board, but more on that later. And there's one more issue that we definitely need to discuss, health pools. Throughout Dragonflight, there was a big problem in Mythic Plus. Players were getting one shot over and over by mechanics that did an absurd amount of damage. This is because those new flashy Dragonflight talent trees added a bunch of new defensives, which meant classes could be bulkier if they actually pressed their buttons. Anyway, it's a complicated problem, but Blizzard's solution was to massively buff HP pools in the War Within, while also nerfing DPS talents that provided leech. This meant, at least in PvE, the game is no longer a one-shot avoidance simulator. Now healers have a more defined role and will be able to plant their feet and actually spam heal. But here, you might start to see a problem when it comes to PvP. On paper, larger HP pools will mean the game is less spiky, but on the flip side, it also means that games tend to be a bit longer and more drawn out, and healers that rely on direct healing output might fall behind early on, since most games are going deeper into dampening. This isn't an issue in PvE since you have more time to actually stand still and channel heals, but in Arena, damage spikes are twice as hard to deal with when you throw kicks, CC, and healing reduction into the mix. Instead, what this might mean is that healer damage and calculated offensive play could be more impactful. Since healing is weaker, it means every point of damage gains value. One of the biggest complaints healers had throughout Dragonflight was that they had no real way to impact the game inside Solo Shuffle. 90% of the time, your job was just to stay back and pump HPS, praying your DPS could win the game for you. At the end of Dragonflight, however, balance started to shift as healers gained enough damage to actually contribute on the scoreboard. Even Resto Druids, widely considered the most passive healer in the game, got huge damage buffs, allowing them to pump out damage during short bursts. So even though healing itself might feel a bit weaker in the War Within, healers might have a bit more influence over the actual game. Now that we know the good parts about the War Within, where does that leave the bad and, of course, the ugly? The pessimistic take is that despite a few obvious improvements to the game, which include better gearing, new hero talents, and some fixes to mobility and micro CC, the War Within is basically just Dragonflight version 2.0. Despite the fact that everyone has these brand new power-ups, the script of most games is still exactly the same. There's the initial clash at the start of every round where both teams fight in a flurry of blood and steel, which is then followed by a two minute waiting period where both teams passively duke it out before two minute cooldowns come back. If you play Dragonflight Solo Shuffle, the War Within will feel almost the same. Now, this isn't a bad thing for everyone, but if you were expecting the game to feel radically different, you might need to temper your expectations. Gone are the days where every expansion feels unique. Remember the jump from Kata to Mop? Or from Mop to Wad, Legion, and then BFA? These games felt radically different. But the real ugly is where the game might be headed in the future. There's a lot of recent discussion over some of the core problems in PvP in the past few expansions, and it's gotten to the point where Venruki needs to react to Asmongold reacting to a Zaryu video who's analyzing a Raikou tweet. But the TLDR is that Blizzard seems to be forcing class design in the direction of Mythic Plus, especially in the way players deal damage, with every spec being jam-packed with cleave and AoE. Combine this with Dragonflight's nerf to CC durations, a 90-second healer trinket, the chaos of Solo Shuffle, the message is pretty clear. PvP has become more like PvE than any other point in WoW's history. Do we expect the War Within to instantly make these problems go away? The answer is no. In fact, the next few expansions might be doubling down on these design trends for a reason you might not expect, filthy casuals. That's because a few of the new systems in the War Within are specifically designed for casual solo players. These include Delves, which are more or less some open world scenarios where you explore a cave for treasure, and then even solo raids. Yes, that's right, a single player game mode for raiding. Gone are the days of needing to even click the LFG tab to automatically join a group with other human players. No, now you can do it all yourself. But what does this have to do with class design and PvP? Well, for one, it's pretty clear that the PvP player base is much smaller than Mythic Plus, which is just one competitor for class design, but now PvP will also have to compete with class design for the casual solo player. 
This could be just one reason that more and more classes are getting pets. It's no longer just BM Hunter and Demo Warlocks who are playing Zoo Tycoon. Now even DKs have an army of apocalyptic horsemen ready to auto-cast AMS just by having the player character perform their normal rotation. Even Destro Warlocks can summon their own demonic army, ready to stress test your GPU. In a world where players are now able to do everything solo, the game needs to feel more immersive and more alive, even if it means being surrounded by NPCs. Just look at the new Warband login screen. These are simply your characters sitting together to avoid any feeling of isolation. And of course, because toolkits need to be designed to tackle the challenges of massive pulls, the AoE damage problem doesn't seem to be going away. At the end of Dragonflight, there were very few comps that actually needed precise, coordinated CC to win games. Most comps simply selected a target, blasted it with damage, and micro CC'd the healer until damage was too overwhelming. Now, of course, there were some exceptions, like the infamous Draco Cleave being played by Frost DKs, but nowadays, 95% of comps sort of play the same. But we don't want to leave you feeling down, because at the end of the day, it's pretty clear that the War Within is taking some steps in the right direction. We ended our Dragonflight tier list with most specs being competitively viable, and slowly, everyone seems to be moving towards the A tier. Sure, there were a few outliers every patch, but honestly, class balance was still pretty good, and will probably get even better now that we've gotten all of those massive talent tree reworks out of the way. So will PvP in the War Within be good? Our answer is yes, and you should be excited for the expansion, even if it will feel familiar to Dragonflight. The game is becoming more alt-friendly and has a combat system exciting enough to attract new players, which we can all be happy about. Before we wrap up, if you want to try our brand new add-on, be sure to head over to skillcap.com. We can configure every PvP add-on in a matter of seconds to give you a highly competitive UI designed to make sure you can hit your rating goals. And when the War Within launches, you will be ready with the best guides and the best add-on settings to get you instantly ahead of the competition. Skillcapped is the only place that guarantees you will gain ratings, so what are you waiting for? Get the rank you've always wanted by visiting the exclusive discount link below. Alright guys, that wraps it up for this one. We want to thank you all for watching. See you soon.